Hey folks, it's Brian. We got to play RQD tonight. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I was short two of my players. And we I waited for about half an hour for one of uh, one of them to see if they might show up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, it was a short session. We uh, talked through some of the issues. Uh, catching each other up because I got myself confused about th there are two sets of ransom, right? And they both involve two bandits and another guy. <laughs> There's the two bandits with the water cultist that they took to Queen Laika. And then there's the two bandits and the leader of the random encounter bandits that they uh, left at Black Spear. And so I was just trying to figure out my own head, in my own head, talking out loud with, with the guys on, okay, so where these guys go and who did they go to? Because I got to figure out how the ransom was all going to work for that. And then uh, back on the road, heading up to um, Apple Lane. Hanging out the tin in, nothing about troll bandits, nothing about uh, baboons. Head over to Rune Gate, check in with the Thane. Differentiating be for ourselves on who is Severos and who is Veranos. Veranos is the old man, Severos is the young man. Um, and then their plan was to go up to the top of Round Top. Uh, north side so you can see the river uh, and try and do some spying right so they set up a little camp and they get a spot where they can get you know see uh some of the river they do spot um on the first day a uh a barge uh being pulled up river and they see it coming around this corner in, in the river and oh which reminds me the live plays in the description where well, I've got the map and I'm, I've got my little cursor going okay you're coming around the, this is where they're coming in now how's that taking us well it's going to take them like four hours to get past where we're we're talking here and we didn't see them beforehand well no um and you know there's all kinds of things that could have occurred but how long would it take oh that's what the four hours came it would have taken four hours <laughs> for they get to like the uh, two sisters to this place <clears throat> and um, so they're trying to figure out okay where'd he come from maybe he came down the tributary and I'm, I'm thinking at least one of the players kind of figured that's probably where they came from that's why we didn't see him until now and um, it's not pet well, they sent the owl down to check things out <laughs> Excuse me, my goodness. And um, uh, a bunch of men, none of them were wearing the cloaks. That's the first thing I thought of. Okay, he's water cultist. Do they have the cloaks? Do they have the little symbol for the eye? Or it reminds me, I did show the party a better sketch of the eye. The uh, iris is a slit, but it's going sideways, not up and down. And it's got the little water rune in it. Uh, but none of these guys are wearing those, those blue cloaks, so that... But there's a bunch of guys out there. It's not heavy laden, so it's not sit down in the water. And they're pulling upstream. So there's lots of discussion. Okay, who could these butt guys be? Where could they be from? You know, If we see them come back down, uh, what does that mean? If we don't see them come back down, what does that mean? A lot of speculation going on. And um, while this is happening, I'm rolling some encounter roll stuff on, on the side. And... Um, they're also, you know, the owl, checking that out, comes back. And they eventually send the owl, well, they send the fetch down to it. But the fetch is, you know, you know, it's a river, it's got fish in it. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Fetch can't really do too much for them there. But they did send the owl up the tributary, and the owl did, in fact, find a fortress. And, and there's some discussion about, okay, Bronze Age Glorantha. What does a fortress really? Is it stone? Is it mud brick? Is it wood? <laughs> that kind of stuff going on. And we have a little discussion about, you know, if this was Mesopotamia, it'd be mud brick, right? If this was Britain, it'd be 
stone with thatched roofs, you know, that kind of stuff going on here. Because, you know, I, I want it to make sense to me. But then there's this weird stuff where Sartar, when he was going through and building cities in Dragon Pass, you know, the dwarves were helping him, so all the stone stuff, Boldhome is full of that kind of crap, and Clearwine Fortress is a stone city, you know, that kind of stuff. So I mean, it's kind of, doesn't quite sit exactly right with me. Same with Johnstown. Johnstown's a stone city. But there's some, you know, banter and discussion about that kind of stuff. Um, so we say, okay, it's Stone Fortress. Internal buildings, there's towers on the outside. There is, in fact, a dock. There was a boat in there. Um, and there's a, 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 a keep kind of building and then some other internal structures. Um, and it's right there on that tributary. Um, and so he brings the owl back to make some discussion on stuff and have it go check something else out. But somewhere in this back and forth of the owl thing, there was an encounter um, with a, uh, a worm, a flying worm. And the owl saw it and comes flying down at Miriam and grabs onto her shoulder. It's a dragon! There's a dragon! There's a dragon! Um, so they start looking around. Where, where? <laughs> Owls don't really point with their wings, right? Um, but Miriam does spot the worm. They don't know it's a worm yet, but uh, they do spot the worm and you know points it out to everybody else so they can actually see. The, okay, they can see something up there flying. Um, Arestra tries to use her animal lore skill to see if she might know something about what this could be. Um, and she made a special success. Okay, so it's some kind of a draconic creature. Um... Maybe not a, an actual true uh, dream dragon. Obviously not a true dragon. Um, but Miriam uh, summons, uh, manifests the fetch. Go talk to him. So the fetch flies up there and the, the, the worm sees Miriam and they have a little conversation and because the, the worm is looking for people to make deals with. He's looking for... Um, lunch <laughs> in exchange for knowledge and so and I for those familiar with hero quest um, it, it's from the Sartar Kingdom of Heroes random encounters thing is it first you have to make a really decent roll to get a special and then on the recent roll on the special to get a worm right so speaker on hills comes down lands has discussions with everybody um, and they start working out, okay, this deal, he's willing to teach. Well, first we must begin with the language of wisdom, which is all thornimous. So, and then there's some discussion on how much, he says, you know, a cow or a few sheep a week kind of thing. And so we try, okay, how much does that really cost and that kind of stuff. And they figure they got, you know, at least seven weeks worth of, you know, cash they can buy cows with to feed this thing to, you know, make a deal. But they don't have time right now. Um, so there's some discussion on, okay, obviously we don't have time right now to do that. However, we would like to, you know, how can we set up where, okay, we have time and cow. Where can we meet? How can we do this stuff? So they, they set up a signal mechanism to set up a, a uh, not a pyre, because that's fire, the stone one, a cairn. A cairn in the Starfire Ridges was... Uh, certain flat stones on top say this is the spot we're ready come visit us and, and we'll give you cows for knowledge kind of thing um, and one of the players in this whole conversation back and forth was asking that you know besides learning old Thormish, what else could they teach us and obviously there's philosophy there's history and one of the players kind of popped up about you know hero questing or accessing the hero plane he said, oh yeah oh, that would be cool wouldn't it that would be most exciting let we can try that if 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 you can progress far enough along <laughs> you know that kind of stuff so it was, that was a big good a decent role play kind of thing i didn't do too much funny voice um got in there a couple times though and um so that actually took up most of our game which was a random random encounter kind of thing um while this is all going on, they left the two players who weren't here, their characters, 
down watching the river and um, there were some fish fishermen they spotted and that kind of thing oh, I forgot to mention that it would rained as they were traveling when they left uh, no there, there was a, a a slight drizzle when they ran to the bandits down by uh, Black Spear and then uh, a light rain on the next day and uh, a lighter rain the day after that but this day they went up on top of of, um, of uh, round top to make campus up it was a deluge <laughs> nearly four inches of rain <laughs> that day it was pouring down on them uh, so uh, it was a mess for them uh, but the next couple of days so they're going to stay up there for a couple of days to help dry themselves out and that kind of stuff and that's when they found the fort um, and then that night that's six two percent coverage uh, overcast because it's still overcast right and uh, there's a random encounter um, during one of the night watches that I wasn't really prepared for I, c I could have run it if I had to you know just kind of swag and using basic numbers and keep track on you know pieces of paper kind of deal um, but we were missing two two of the players one of which is one of their fighters so uh, we decided to kind of call it there okay so now the two guys we, we set up the watches the two guys that were on watch when this occurs they each get to make listen and scan rolls because that's what they're trying to do right and uh, they both miss both of them and um, so there's this bone no blood blood chilling howl and that's where we ended the session so that's how we'll begin the next session and um, then you know statements of intent let's have a fight uh, there was a couple of things I had to retcon with the party one being that during sacred time there was a rumor about a warlord in Prax um, uh, combining is not the right word um, gathering the various tribes underneath him kind of deal with, you know the white bull and our grass and all that kind of stuff so we're starting to, to filter through on that kind of thing I am running my my Glorantha is a year behind um, the you know, published materials kind of thing at least the stuff that I've been able to find and that's only because there's stuff that happened that first year that I didn't even know about. And we went through the whole first year. You know, well, we need to put it in. So it was, you know, like the Battle of Queens was the first thing I had to plug back in. So we did that in, in 1627 instead of 26, I think is when it was supposed to have happened. You know, so, you know, that kind of thing. So when Argrath comes in and uh, attacks, is it furthest, I believe? Um, you know, that's going to be happening this year instead of last year kind of deal. So... <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to weave that stuff in and make it happen. Also, um, uh, I did make a call on this um, ice knife thing that uh, that they found. I did put some parameters on it. Um, the spell matrix applies, can only be cast on the dagger. Um, and that you need to have a water rune of 60% or, or higher in order to actually um, access the matrix to use it. Unfortunately, that counts out everybody in the party because there's only two people that have water rune at all, and it's both it's at 40% on both of them. Um, and, and the second piece to that is um, the uh, fire blade and fire arrow spell. Instead of it doing straight 3d6 no matter what kind of weapon it's on and this is something i had had already changed you know in my head but since we had fire blade and probably bringing it up is that you know a dagger with fire blade and a great sword of fire blade both doing the same damage just does not make sense to me and if it's just because the the, fl the blade is fire how do you get a slash out of it you know how do you get a special or an impale it's just fire you know it's not going to do that kind of stuff so to balance both of those things out, ooh, there's that word, that B word. Um, what what I've done is I've I've changed instead of doing you know, is it three d six or is it forty six? I think it's three d six damage. Um, outright, what I do is you do weapon damage plus 
2d8, which for a broadsword equates out to being roughly 3d6, right? So, um, so you still get special effects from the weapon itself because there's a physical item there, and you get the extra damage from the elemental effects, you know, the fire blade. And the ice blade is just kind of the opposite; it's just cold and freezes. Uh, but you know, freezing, freezing burns, right? So. Um, so I had to do that piece as well. Uh, first to explain about the fire blade and how the ice blade is the same way. And uh, so I did a little retcon of all that kind of stuff. So nobody's going to be able to use a dagger anymore. <laughs> oh, such is life. Happy gaming.